Is it true that you can get dramatically better results by adding four Botox sessions to your daily finasteride? I'm going to tell you straight up, it certainly is. And today you will learn just how this is possible as well as all the science behind it. You will not want to miss today's video. Stay tuned. Just before we get started today, I highly recommend getting a copy of our new free ebook, The Ultimate Hair Regrowth System. If you're interested in the step-by-step -step system for getting thicker, healthier hair and fixing hair loss at the root, then this is a must read. Just check out the link below this video, enter your email and grab your free copy now. Hello, this is Tony for HairGuard. Now, as we've discussed multiple times in the past, the best way to approach hair loss is to combine as many treatments as possible. And ideally, you want these treatments to be as distinctive from each other as possible. This way, you get different benefits from each treatment and better overall regrowth. Now, one of the most effective but overlooked treatments you can include in any hair loss regimen is purely mechanical. That's relieving the tension in your scalp and relieving it through mechanical means. We're gonna get into the details of exactly why this is so effective in a few minutes. But for now, I want you to remember that relieving your scalp tension will max out the benefits you will get from any pharmaceutical treatment. And just by how much is what we're going to be covering in today's video. So one of the easiest ways to relieve scalp tension is with Botox. Briefly, the technique involves administering a series of Botox injections at pre-specified sites around the scalp. The total dose administered is measured in so-called Botox units. And these range from a low of 30 units to a high of 150 units. And 150 is the most common dosage you'll find in these hair loss studies. To give you an idea at how this compares to facial Botox, which is far more widely used, you'd be looking at between 15 to 30 units to relieve the facial wrinkles. So the study we'll be looking at today comes from the August 2020 issue of the journal Biomed Research International. The researchers recruited a total of 63 balding men. They were grades two to four on the Norwood scale and they were randomly assigned to one of two groups. The men in the first group got Botox injections to their scalp every three months over the span of one year. So four Botox sessions in total. And the men in the combination group underwent the four Botox sessions in the exact same way. But in addition, they also took one milligram daily oral finasteride. There were two main efficacy criteria. Number one was hair counts in a balding area that was two centimeters squared. And number two were the evaluations of before and after photos of the entire head. And these were made by two expert dermatologists. Let's check out the results. In this table, you can see how the hair counts evolved over time across the two groups. The column on the left is the Botox group alone. And the column on the right is the combination group. Compared to their baseline, the Botox group gained about 16 new hairs at the three-month mark. This rose to 28 at six months, 34 at nine months, and 38 after one full year. But the combination group of Botox plus finasteride fared better. Compared to baseline, these men gained an average of 27 hairs after three months. This rose to 42 hairs at six months, 50 at nine months, and 56 at the one-year mark. These were pretty massive increases, an average of 50% more regrowth compared to the Botox only group. So we just saw how the combination group is easily superior to the Botox monotherapy. But a fascinating question is, how does Botox on its own stack up against finasteride on its own? The researchers in this study did not include a finasteride monotherapy group, but fortunately, there's loads of previous studies we can turn to. For example, a recent meta-analysis analyzed all randomized clinical trials of finasteride monotherapy, and they reported an average of 18.3 new hairs after one year of finasteride treatment. If you recall, the Botox only group in this study had an average of 38 new hairs after one year of treatment. But this was for an area that was two centimeters squared. And if you divide it by half, you end up with 19 new hairs per centimeter squared, which is more or less identical to finasteride. The combination group had an average of 56 new hairs at the one year mark, which divided by two gives us 28 new hairs. So to recap the results of the three treatments at the 12 month mark, Botox only 19 new hairs per centimeter squared, finasteride only 18 hairs, and Botox plus finasteride 28 hairs. 
Now, hair counts and all are great, but hair loss is a cosmetic condition. So at the end of the day, what matters is how visible the results are to the naked eye. There was a four point scale that the dermatologists in this study used to rate the before and after photos of each man. And it ranged from poor, fair, good, to excellent regrowth. At the final evaluation at the 12 month mark, 43% of men in the Botox group were rated as good or excellent. The combination group had even better results with 54% of men getting rated as good or excellent. Excellent. You can see in this series of photos representative images from a man in each group. The series of photos in the top row show a patient from the Botox only group. From left to right, the photos are at baseline, then at 3, 6, 9, and 12 months into treatment. Pretty impressive results. And at the bottom row, you can see corresponding results from a man in the combination treatment. So what about side effects? Now, with regards to side effects, these were minimal across both groups. One man in the Botox only group developed headache and one man in the finasteride group was nauseous and breathless, but the doctors chalked this down to the Botox injections. Another three men in both groups developed mild and fleeting topical side effects like redness and swelling. These were all down to the shots. So at this point, the evidence for Botox being an effective hair loss treatment seems pretty overwhelming. Starting in 2010 with this paper out of Canada, the evidence has now grown to such a point where it's practically incontrovertible. Now, this on its own would be very interesting if Botox was just another hair loss treatment, like, I don't know, saw palmetto or PRP or whatever. But there's more than that here because as I said, Botox works in a purely mechanical way. All it does is relax the scalp muscles. It has no effect on the hair follicle whatsoever, at least nothing that we know of. So nothing to do with androgens or the hair growth cycle or the dermapapilla cells or anything like that. But still, even though it works in a purely mechanical fashion, it manages results that are comparable to finasteride. Just this one piece of evidence tells us that there's something very amiss with the prevailing model of pattern hair loss. It does not all begin and end with a hair follicle and certainly not with DHT. According to the authors of this study, Botox, and I quote, may relax the muscle around the head, increase blood flow and oxygen concentration in the alopecia area, and further inhibit the activation of DHT, ultimately leading to a reduced occurrence of hair loss. So their results suggest there is far more here than just DHT. Let us know in the comments, what do you make of all of this? Is Botox something you would try or would the high cost put you off? And we'd especially like to hear from you if you've already started taking finasteride or if it's something you're considering. And don't forget to grab your own free copy of the ultimate hair regrowth system in the link below this video. Till next time, this was Tony for HairGuard. Take care.